Now, if that's not inspiring, I don't know what is. I, I see Mia over there, who's the executive director, who, whose eyes are filled with tears. You should be so proud. Congratulations. Awesome. Next is uh, Colleen Raposa, who is a direct support staff at Road to Responsibility. You're good. Take a deep breath. Oh. That's good. You got it. <laughs> okay. Hi, my name is Colleen. I live in Marshfield. I am proud to say that I am a human services employee. I currently work as a case manager in one of Road to Responsibility's employment programs, also located in Marshfield, and I am pleased to be a member of the Caring Force. I would like to talk to you about the budget priorities on behalf of Caring Force members, the nearly 200,000 workers and the 1 in 10 residents in Massachusetts who receive our services and their families. Thankfully, the legislature has long been an ally to human services sector. Because of the action by the Joint Committee on Ways and Means and the entire legislature, direct care workers have received $40 million over the last three years, allowing many workers to receive a modest wage adjustment of about 2% per year. However, those increases barely keep up with the inflation and we still endured tough cuts and chronic underfunding for years. Now our crucial programs that serve thousands of Massachusetts families and the dedicated people who work in them desperately need additional funding in this year's budget. On behalf of all the workers and the families that we serve, I respectfully ask the legislature to increase funding for all human service workers and programs considering the immeasurable value they provide to our families, communities, and our state's economy. We request that the legislature provide the administration's proposed $200 million investment in rates include a $16.6 .6 million salary reserve for low-paid workers not covered by the new rates and add additional funding for programs not covered by rate reform. As a case manager, I am responsible for all the communication with the families and service coordinators of those that I serve. I also work closely with the individuals that we serve to assist them with attaining their goals of becoming competitive in our workforce. I work with a variety of people with different skill levels and needs, and our staff work tires tirelessly to accommodate the different needs of every individual in our programs. I also work closely with my program coordinator and other coworkers within our programs to ensure the safety and success of all that we serve every day. I started working for RTR almost five years ago at one of our many residential homes. I don't make a lot of money, but I do make a difference in the lives of the people I work with every day. My job can be challenging at times, but I can honestly say that I love what I do. I was lucky enough to work in a home with three staff that had worked together for many years. Then I became part of that team and worked with the staff and residents for almost two years. I then transferred to, to the employment program in Marshfield where I have been now for the last three years, and I am ecstatic to say that four out of the nine of us have been working in this program for the last three years. We are very lucky to be able to say that because we are such a tight-knit team. We are able to be a much better support system for those that we serve. But not many teams stay together because employee turnover is so high. All of our workers love what they do and find it deeply fulfilling, but unfortunately that doesn't pay the bills, and we regularly lose great people who are forced to find higher-paying jobs. I am a single mother of a beautiful 16-year-old daughter that has heard the phrase, no honey, we can't get that or do that more times than I can count. Now as we begin the college process, I wonder and worry how I am going to help her pay for her education so that she doesn't have to tell her children no like I have had to tell her. Yes, I could look for a better paying job, but I would miss the people I work with and the valuable work that we do. I struggle every day to keep my head above water financially, but my struggles are nothing compared to the struggles of the people I work with every day. And if they can always have a smile and a kind word for me and the staff, then the least I can do is be there for them to help them be as independent and as successful as is humanly possible. I know that the staff I work with care just as much as I do, and unfortunately we lose great people because they can't live on the atrocious wages that we are expected to live on. So please, I beg you, help us keep these great, kind, and loving people in human services by paying them a livable wage. All of our programs, residential and employment, provide our individuals with support and empowerment in every corner of the Commonwealth, which enables them to be active and productive members in their communities and local economies. These programs and workers have been underfunded for decades. We have an opportunity to provide financial security to hundreds of thousands of low-paid human service workers. By doing this, it would provide stronger programs for hundreds of thousands of our most vulnerable residents. I appreciate your continued support of low-paid human service workers and the clients that we serve, and for taking the time to listen to my story. Thank you.
Thank you for that.